With yesterday's New York City Marathon that marks the end of the fall 2023 world major marathon racing season. The season where we see all the super shoe advancements from the big brands. Now, yesterday was kind of the same story of Nike versus Adidas, but there were a couple surprises from On and Unarmor, two brands we rarely ever talk about. As I said in the intro, the New York City Marathon is the last of the world majors for the year, so this marks the end of the season, not only for the fall 2023 racing season, but just 2023 in general. Yes, there are other races after this, but they're not as important as these world majors, and we're not going to really probably see much more shoe advancement beyond a few dev models here and there. So yesterday for Adidas was good. You know, they got a course record with Tola's uh, race for the evil one now he was in the v2 the one with the more textured or grooved uh, outsole i i think he beat it by eight seconds you know i don't think adidas was really gunning for that record but i'm sure they're just going to add it on to you know the other records the evil one already has gotten but honestly watching his race or watching the highlights of his race because i actually participated in the race um he looks strong he probably could have done that in the adios pro 3 and for other Adidas athletes, pretty much all the other ones we saw in the men's and women's races that were in the top 10 were in Adios Pro 3s. So there weren't a lot of Evil Ones at this race, which tells me that either Adidas is running low on Evil Ones or the prized athletes that Adidas was giving the Evil One weren't at this race. But good for Adidas. They got a course record. I'm sure they'll be happy with that. And overall, I think it was, it was a decent day for Adidas. For Nike, they had a bit of a low-key day. Gide got second in the women's race, and in fact, the women's race was crazy. The last, you know, one to two K of the race and the kick that Obiri had at the end was absolutely crazy. She deserved that that victory. Um, I was not surprised to see Gide in the Alpha Fly 3. We've seen her pretty consistently in that shoe in training and in other races this year. So no big surprises there. On the men's side, though, uh, the third place, Katata, uh, we saw in the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2, still top Nike Pro elites running in the Next% Percent 2. I'm still surprised Nike's allowing this, but again, these athletes are going to run what they're most comfortable in. Obviously, a lot of these uh, East African runners are more comfortable in the uh, Next% Percent 2. Though in this race, we did see far less of them in the next percent too, but Kitata, you know, stuck to what he, he trained in, what he knows, what he likes, and he got third place in an, in an older shoe. All the other top 10 uh, Vaporfly finishes were Vaporfly 3s, so, uh, you know, I would expect by spring 2024 for this to sort of even out and for everyone to be in Vaporfly 3s or Vaporfly 4 prototypes or even 5 because I don't know if the 4 is going to be an update, an upper update to the 3 or it's going to be a totally new shoe. But we have been seeing more recent Vaporfly 4 leaks um, they look a lot more like the Alpha Fly 3. So stay tuned for that. We'll see what spring 2024 brings Nike in the marathon racing season. Now for the surprises, you know, ASICS was not really anywhere. There was a couple runners in the men's and women's races in the top 10. Um, I'm assuming they're in the dev shoes that we've seen, the Metaspeed dev shoe that we've seen, you know, pretty consistently this fall. Um, so no, no real news there. On getting first place uh, in the women's side with Obiri was kind of crazy. And she was in the new On development shoe, Marathon Racer, not the Cloud Echo Boom 3, but a new shoe that we have seen a few times talked about and we've seen it in great detail on YouTube already. I'll put a link in the description to that video which goes into um, an athlete showing that shoe off. But that shoe is a completely different shoe from the Cloud Echo Boom 3. Uh, much softer, much higher stack, um, you know, better ground feel, a lot of things in there. So good for On. On has had quite a fall 2023 racing season. They've really come out strong and they've really finally gotten a good result for some of their new shoe development. And then Under Armour with third place, um, with the, uh, who would have been talking about Under Armour at any point in the past six months when it comes to marathon racing? So good for Under Armour. 
I honestly don't know anything about Under Armour. In fact, I didn't even think they still made running shoes, at least elite level running shoes. I know they make like gym shoes and, and kind of fitness running shoes and some, you know, casual running shoes. But I thought they had stepped back from, you know, really elite level running. So good for Under Armour. Uh, I don't have a lot to say about that shoe because I know nothing about it, but, but good for them. And it's good to see other brands up there on the podiums. I think the biggest takeaway from the New York City Marathon this year, and just in general, the fall races we've seen uh, this fall 2023 racing season is that shoes are tools. They're good tools. They will ha help a runner that's having a great day have a marginally better day, but they're not going to make a runner who has had a bad day have a great day. So it does still come down to the runner and it's cool and fun to talk about super shoes and see the latest and greatest on the feet of elites at these world major marathons but i don't want to take anything away from the athletes and their training and how good a performance as we've seen in these fall 2023 races for the top podium places thank you for making it to the end of the video if you like this type of content consider subscribing you'll see more content like this pop up in your feed if not drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow which i always appreciate and with that i'll catch you in the next one